<laughs> the phone rang. Exhausted from last night's rampage, I must have fallen asleep. I woke up to the phone ringing and ran into the bathroom, stood on the toilet, and flipped open the phone taped to the ceiling. It was Amy. And I feel so much better. She was really worried about me, and apparently had been trying to contact me since the last time I talked to her. She's coming over now, and yes, she knows where I am without me telling her. I feel so embarrassed. I am definitely throwing this journal away before anyone sees it. I don't even know why I'm writing in it now. Maybe it's just because it's the only communication I've had at all since... God knows when. I look like hell, too. I looked in the mirror before I came back in here. My eyes are sunken, my stubble is thicker, and I just look generally unhealthy. My apartment is trashed, but I'm not going to clean it up. I think I need someone else to see what I've been through. These past few days have NOT been normal. I am not one to imagine things. I know I have been the victim of extreme probability. I probably miss seeing another person a dozen times. I just happened to go out when it was late at night, or the middle of the day when everybody else was gone. Everything's perfectly fine. I know this now. Plus, I found something in the closet last night that helped me tremendously. A television! I set it up before I wrote this, and it's on in the background. Television has always been an escape for me. And it reminds me that there's a world beyond these dingy brick walls. I'm glad Amy's the only one that responded to me after last night's frantic pestering of everyone I could contact. She's been my best friend for years. She doesn't know it, but I count the day that I met her among one of the few moments of true happiness in my life. <laughs> I remember that warm summer day fondly. It seems like a different reality from this dark, rainy, lonely place. I feel like I spent days sitting in that playground, much too old to play, just talking with her and hanging around doing nothing at all. I still feel like I can go back to that moment sometimes, and it reminds me that this damn place is not all that there is. Finally, a knock on the door. I thought it was odd that I couldn't see her through the camera I hid between the two soda machines. I figured that was just bad positioning. Like when I couldn't see out the front door. I should have known. I should have known! After the knock, I yelled through the door chokingly that I had a camera between the two soda machines because I was embarrassed myself that I had taken the paranoia so far. After I did that, I saw her image walk over to the camera and look down at it. She smiled and waved. Hey, she said to the camera brightly, giving it a wry look. It's weird, I know, I said into the mic attached to my computer. I've had a weird few days. Must have. She replied, Open the door, John. I hesitated. How could I be sure? Hey, humor me a second here. I told her through the mic. Tell me one thing about us. Just prove to me you're you. She gave the camera a weird look. Um, alright. She said, slowly thinking. We met randomly at a playground when we were both way too old to be there. I sighed deeply as reality returned and fear faded. God, I've been so ridiculous. Of course it was Amy. But they wasn't anywhere in the world except in my memory. I'd never even mention it to anyone, not out of embarrassment. 
but out of a strange secret nostalgia and a longing for those days to return. If there was some unknown force at work trying to trick me, as I feared, there was no way they could know about that day. <laughs> All right, I'll explain everything, I told her. Be right there. I ran to my small bathroom and fixed my hair as best as I could. I looked like hell, but she would understand. Snickering at my own unbelievable behavior and the mess I'd made of the place, I walked to the door, put my hand on the doorknob and gave the mess one last look. <laughs> so ridiculous, I thought. My eyes traced over the half-eaten food lying on the ground, the overflowing trash bin, and the bed I tipped to one side looking for God knows what. I almost turned to the door and opened it, but my eyes fell on one last thing. The old webcam. The one I used for that eerily vacant chat with my friend. Its silent black sphere lay haphazardly tossed to the side, its lens pointed at the table where this journal lay. An overwhelming terror took me as I realized that if something could see through that camera, it would have seen what I just wrote about that day. I asked her for any one thing about us, and she chose the one thing in the world that I thought they or it did not know. But it did! It did know! It could have been watching me the whole time! I didn't open the door. I screamed. I screamed in uncontrollable terror. I stomped on the old webcam on the floor. The door shook and the doorknob tried to turn, but I didn't hear Amy's voice through the door. Was the basement door made to keep out drafts too thick? Or was Amy not outside? What could have been trying to get in if not her? What the hell is out there? I saw her on the computer through the camera outside. I heard her on the speakers through the camera outside. But was it real? How can I know? She's gone now. I screamed and shouted for help. I piled up everything in my apartment against that door.